Keep yourself in the loop of everything football. Listen to Alex and Jeremiah on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Hello there, I'm Jeremiah. I am Alex, always and forever here. Dedicated to college and NFL football. The latest football news on and off the feet. NFL draft trade rumors. We've got you covered from the NFL, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, and everything else in between. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Contest Football Podcast, where we discuss the latest news, rumors, and games of the NFL and college football. From the latest science dishes, breakout stars, and all the news in between, as always, I'm Jeremiah. I am Ben. Hey, I'm Anthony. We are back here on a Friday, a football Friday, leading you into the weekend. Always, always a great day on Friday to talk NFL games. And we have to look at last night's game, really just a stinker in my eyes. The San Diego Chargers and the Denver Broncos. The Chargers do come out on top 21-13. to 13. Really just just an ugly game. And I, I feel like Denver was really set up to fail in this game. You have Trevor Simeon returning who did not play Sunday with the shoulder sprain, although it is in his non-throwing shoulder. He's probably still dealing with a little bit of effects from that. You don't have your head coach in Gary Kubiak and your offensive play caller because he's dealing with the migrant issues. He did not get out of the hospital until Tuesday. And you're on a short week going into San Diego. I really feel like they were just set up to fail in this game. And they looked like it, especially on offense. They they did not look good at all. The Chargers were up 19-3 to at one point in this game. And you can also talk about their defense as well, not playing up to part as we were seeing. And this is two games in a row now that we've seen subpar performances from this Broncos defense and overall the team. And I know Paxton Lynch started last week against the Falcons. It was his first start. He did okay enough but the defense just wasn't there the whole team struggled yesterday and yeah, the yeah. Chargers finally found a way to win games late and you know it went inside the final 30 seconds there the Broncos recovered that onside kick I think to get another possession they and were trying went, Chargers were trying to lose the, that game they, it's like it's here like, we go again it's like the Chargers were trying to find a way to lose and I'm like really and but fortunately the Chargers head on to win and at the end. So yeah, they have, go ahead, Anthony. So they have a stat. Uh, before this game, Bleacher Report uh, had it on Instagram. Through the first three quarters, the Chargers were plus 48. Fourth quarter overtime, minus 38. It's basically like we got this, you know, and then at the end it's just like, oh, no, here we go. And then all of a sudden Phillip Rivers is down four and he has to go 80 yards with no timeouts to win the game. The Chargers going into last night's game were one and four. Obviously now they're two and four. Right. But they were one and four and they were averaging thirty points a game on yeah. offense. Like yeah. come on. Like I said, you're just finding ways to lose. Last night they do get it done, but they really controlled this game the whole entire time. The Chargers offense in particular really dominating the time of possession, although thirty three to twenty six is a little sort of even. But Phillip Rivers kind of dinked and dunked his way down the field and really controlled a lot of the tempo and possession of that game, especially in the first half, two long drives in the first half, really limiting Denver's offense. Denver did not really play great, as as, as I said. They were down 19-3, so that kind of takes the running game out of it. But they didn't really try to run the ball. C.J. Anderson only 10 carries, 37 yards. Devontae Booker, 5 carries, 46 yards, so a little better. But they really did not even try to get this running game going. Trevor Simeon had to throw the ball 50 times last night. That's something that Denver doesn't want to do even if they have a guy like Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees under center, let alone Trevor Simeon. So not not a good recipe for Denver last night. And the one good thing I'll say with the Broncos, not a good thing, but not panicky kind of thing, is while the Broncos haven't looked good the last two weeks, they have the Texans coming up with a decent amount of rest on Monday Night Football. So you have at least that to look forward to. It's just like, okay, the Falcons, their offense is really good. Maybe understand that a little bit. Chargers at home, Thursday night football. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of a thing. If you do it against the Texans, okay, that's three weeks in a row. That becomes a trend, and now we have to look at it. But if they can do well against the Texans, okay, that's fine. Just everything's – we're fine. I think Denver's still okay. I mean, 
Jeremiah, you touched on the defense, and the one knock sort of on that defense so far is how they've done on opening drives this year, including last night the Chargers where they touched down to Hunter Henry on the first drive of the game. They've given up 31 points now on opening drives this season. Last year, as a whole, they only gave up 24 points on opening drives the whole entire year, and only through six games they've already toppled that number. So I realize maybe DeMarcus Ware being out has a little bit of an effect on maybe Von Miller and that pass rush on the right side because Miller comes off the left, and he's unstoppable. He had a sack last night. He's still going to affect the game. But without sort of his counterpart there in, in DeMarcus Ware, they don't have that even balance. They lost him Malik Jackson as a free agent to Jacksonville. Dan Trevathan as a free agent goes to Denver. I'm sorry, not Denver. From Denver to Chicago. So they still have, you know, a good solid defense, but it, you, can, you can't keep everybody there. You don't have money to do that. So I think the defense will be okay. Phillip Rivers, he's a smart guy. Like I say, he kind of dinked and dunked his way down the field. A lot of check downs. That's what you get from Rivers. I feel like their defense is okay. It's just not getting off to great starts, and that's kind of affecting their offense because this is a team that's not built to come from behind. They want to play as ahead, run the ball, manage the game, let their defense sort of handle that game for them. I feel like they're okay, but just kind of slipping up a little bit too much. Maybe their defense is not like Minnesota's right now where it can literally carry them because their offense is not really up to par, it seems like. Yeah, and like last year... This defense can't carry the team. Uh, you can only go so far with a great defense. And like you said, Ben, this team, this defense is not, I don't think this defense is not great. Uh, it's good, but it's not great. Minnesota's defense is great. They make quarterbacks play average to below average. We've seen it throughout the first five weeks. And the Broncos, they're actually now in second place. You know who's in first place now? The Oakland Raiders. If the season ended right now, the Raiders would be the number one seed in the AFC. Yeah. Just but, think about that. Yeah, and then, but going to the AFC West standings here, you know, the Chargers are still in last place at 2-4. and four. Uh, The Chiefs are in third place at 2-2. Two and two. Who are going to play the Raiders, in fact? So this division is a little more competitive now because of the Broncos' recent struggles. And if the Chargers happen to find ways to close out games late, like they did last night, I can get a slight chance in the second half of the season, but now I think it's a three-team race now uh, with the Chiefs, Broncos, and Raiders, depending on how this Chiefs-Raiders game goes this uh, Sunday. It's it's going to be really interesting to look at. I feel like this is one of the more competitive divisions now. San Diego's had a lead in every game, so they could honestly be 5-1, and 6-0 and maybe if they could just finish games. They remind me of the Giants last year. Just can't seem to finish games. But then that kind of throws me over to the Giants. Another competitive division is the NFC East. When last year, 8-8 eight and eight got you in the playoffs. Last year, Denver was really great. Kansas City was really great. Oakland was kind of up there. And then San Diego is still very capable, as you mentioned, with Phillip Rivers. This is definitely one of the more com- competitive divisions now on the AFC side. Really, really good division. Yeah, 100%. So the Raiders... They're four and one, but their point differential is only plus five. So it's one of those things where it's like they're winning, but they're not exactly dominating by any stretch. Chargers, for as bad as they are, they're still plus eighteen in point differential. You see, Philip Rivers is a good quarterback, but you've seen—I don't know if it happened last night, but for through the first five weeks, they've at least one person has gone on IR after every game for the last five weeks. So they just keep dropping like flies. Kansas City, 2-2, two and two, they're you know one of those teams that will stick around, kind of thing like that. Alex Smith, we know what to expect from him. We talked about it before with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs with uh, Andy Reid on the sports show, 15-2 off of a bye. So you'd expect possibly good things from them. And that whole division, you know, the Broncos, Super Bowl champions, that along with, I would say, maybe the um, NFC West, you know, outside of the San Francisco 49ers, like, probably the best divisions in the NFL. Definitely. And you mentioned the Raiders and you brought up a good point. Their margin in differential for points is plus five. The Raiders biggest win is their seven point victory over the Titans in week three. And that was a game where the Titans were driving at the end with a chance to try and tie the game. So really with the exception of the Falcons loss, which was seven points, they really dominated that game. Atlanta did. They've been in a close game every single week out. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, look at that defense that's been playing. They just can't stop anybody. And I do think the Raiders are one of the good teams in AFC, but this isn't a Super Bowl team. Sure, they're a playoff team, but they're not a Super Bowl team. And then if they do win the, the division and host a playoff game, 
they could win that home playoff game. But I don't see this Oakland Raiders team making a deep playoff run. As if the Denver Broncos, they're more built for it. Because they got the defense, they got the running game there. They're just struggling a little bit right now. So I think as of now, maybe I can still give the division to the Broncos. But it is more competitive the way things have shaken out in recent uh, days or you, recent week. And you talk about with the Raiders. Yeah, they may not win the Super Bowl, but baby steps with yeah. that like the team you know it's been one just of the worst to teams the playoffs would be no 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 don't get me wrong this is a this is a playoff team i yeah. just don't see them as a you after know, the last football contender what like 13 years basically since 2003 the team has been 2002 well 2003 they went yeah. to the super bowl but yeah. after that the 2003 season they were terrible so it's oh, like yeah. after that 02 season where they lost in the super bowl to gannon like they haven't been the same team and at least make into the playoffs would show so much you know hope for the city of Oakland, possibly Vegas in a little bit. But it's one of those, you know, kind of things where, you know, you just need those baby steps of just making the playoffs. Yeah, yeah I, de I definitely agree with you. So the Chargers, as I mentioned, sit at 2-4 and four in a tough, tough AFC West. They'll be facing the Falcons, who are doing quite well themselves so far. They have a tough game against Seattle. We'll probably preview that in the next segment. So they will be facing the Falcons. And as Anthony mentioned, Denver has a game on the following Monday night from this upcoming one against Houston. So a really, really long time to prepare. It's going to be a while before we see Denver back in game That's action. That's 11 days. 11 days. <laughs> wow. That's a long time, you know. Long time. So with that being said, we'll take our first break here at the GSMC Football Podcast. After the break, we'll be talking about the rest of the games in the NFL this week. We've talked about the Raiders. They have a big game against the Chiefs. We'll preview that one as well as more right here at the GSMC Football Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. We are back here at the GSMC Football Podcast. We are talking about Week 6 in the National Football League. A lot, a lot of great games. So let's jump right in to some of the big ones this weekend. So definitely the big one of the weekend is the Browns, you know, sitting at 0-5. <laughs> They're a great game against the Titans, you know, right? Oh, I'm like, you so would do that. No, okay, here, here, I'll say this real quick. I'll say this real quick. If there's a game the Browns are going to win, I think it's this game. You realize Marcus Mariota at home in his career is 1-9. and nine. Wow. In his career at home. Tennessee is at home. He's got one career home victory, Marcus Mariota. I think that was the first game of his career, too. Yes, I, yeah. it was. Yeah. Against Jameis Winston last year. So if there's a game that Cleveland's going to get off the schneid, it's right here. I think so. No, I don't. I don't, I don't I'm know. not saying they're going to no. win, but if there's a game. No, ten, uh, Marcus Mariota balled out last Sunday, and I expect him to do the same. But um, this isn't a huge, intriguing matchup. <laughs> no, by, but, by not any stretch of imagination. <laughs> But another intriguing matchup uh, to me, for per se, well, not intriguing, but the most interesting uh, has to be the San Francisco 49ers at the Buffalo Bills. It's only interesting for one reason and one player, and it's Colin Kaepernick. He makes this game interesting now. This this particular, oh, I, to me, he makes the San Francisco 49ers interesting. I'm not saying he makes them good. He but makes for, them interesting. But for how long? Like, if he goes through the first half and he's terrible, then all of a sudden you don't care about it anymore if the Bills are up, call hey, it 21-0. Hey, I don't, I'm not going to say he's going to go 11-0 or anything. I'm saying he makes this team interesting for maybe one week, two weeks, three weeks. We don't know. Or maybe a, a quarter, <laughs> the first quarter. Hey, I, I love the Bills I in this don't, game. I, think I, it's I, I be do a too. Oh, no, no. I like the Bills in this game too. And I'm not going to pretend like Colin Kaepernick is going to save the 49ers season because this team's just not talented. I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm just saying, you know, he makes this team, this game more interesting. People really want to see him, so to speak. I want to see what he can do in the Chip Kelly offense. I think it would be interesting. 
You make you make some good points, yeah. and I, I think they're really valid. To be honest, I think not maybe not this game, but before the season ends, I think Kaepernick gets hurt again. He's underweight. He switched to a vegan diet, which is you know, obviously a healthy choice. We've seen people do it before. Aaron Foster did it, but you lose a lot of weight. You haven't played really in any solid game action for over a year now. I, I think it's just, and they have no really playmakers with the exception of Carlos Hyde in my eyes. I think he's just asking to get hurt eventually because he's going to run. Even Blaine Gabbert was running with this team. Colin Kaepernick is 10 times the runner Blaine Gabbert will ever be. So I think it just spells for a disaster. I think Kaepernick will probably get hurt eventually. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say that. I, don't, I'm I not, hope he doesn't. I, I'm I not, never want anyone yeah, to get hurt. I'm, but not, I mean, I'm not going to say that he's going to get hurt. It's just a terrible thing to say. But I understand why you <laughs> I'm think I'm a terrible that. guy. I'm sorry. You're a terrible person, Ben. I'm a no. terrible, terrible guy. <laughs> All right, so some other games this weekend that are really, really interesting. Definitely, let's talk about this Kansas City Chiefs and Raiders game. Mm -hmm. So the Raiders are at home after their win last week. Kansas City is off a bye week. And, Anthony, you have a great stat about right. Andy Reid off bye weeks. We should know, but you have the official numbers. 15-2, and two, Andy Reid is off of, a bye, off of a bye week. That goes back to him and Philly and everything else like that. I very much like the Chiefs in this game. You know, the 15-2 and two part helps. But also, as a team with the Raiders, they're good, but they're sort of fool's goalsy a little bit, you know, having the point differential that's very low. Basically, their offense just revolves around David Carr throwing to Amari Cooper, which, to be fair, isn't a bad way to run your offense, especially for a young quarterback. It's just like, oh, him. Yeah, I'm going to throw it to him. It's kind of the Julio Jones dynamic with Andy Dalton. It's kind of the what Matthew Stafford and Megatron used to be. It's just like, oh, that guy, eh, even if he's not open, I'm just going to throw to him. Definitely. I'm, I'm with you on this one. I like Kansas City. The Oakland Raiders are averaging, giving up over 400 yards mm -hmm. on defense. Kansas City, I don't expect to go for 400 yards. Yeah. But their offense does not make mistakes. Alex Smith is a basically a good manager. Jamal Charles will probably be more back in the thick of things. We've seen what he's done in the past against the Raiders. Remember the game he had six touchdowns. So he's capable of scoring against the Raiders. Kansas City's defense really opportunistic, create a lot of turnovers. I like Kansas City off of a bye week. I think it'll be maybe a close game, one possession game, but I like the Chiefs. And it is great to see how a Chiefs and Raiders game is actually meaningful now. It's, it's like it's a, really one of the, it's been one of the biggest rivalries it's, it's meaningful for a while, finally. But not so much yeah. lately, but it's it's a big rivalry. You know, these two teams hate each other. And then, you know, we got the Chiefs coming off a of bye, you know, Andy Reid's always good off a of bye. But I think I'm going to go with the Oakland Raiders on this one. Okay. I think I am. You know, they, this team is tough to play at home, and I understand that this defense is kind of uh, – they're, they're kind of – they can't really stop anybody, but I do think they're going to try to figure things out starting this week, and they are playing Alex Smith. Alex Smith's going to light up anybody. Remember that. And Jamal Charles is coming back, but I think they're going to slowly ease him. He's not going to get 30 touches like he used to. He's probably going to get no. like close to 15. Because Spencer Ware probably earned a role here. So I do see the Raiders winning this game going to 5-1. and one. and Very interesting. Yeah, I, I'm i all about the Raiders this year, man. You're hopping on that Raider bandwagon. Uh, I, 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 I was high on them. I was drinking high. the Raider Kool-Aid. I mean, they, they, they've been it's a the, great team. They've it's the black Kool-Aid, by the way. Silver and black Kool-Aid. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I just said the Raider Kool-Aid. So. Silver and black Kool-Aid. Okay, yeah. well couple of games that are really really good on paper definitely one of the matchups of the weekend here in the nfc we have the four and one dallas cowboys going into lambeau field to take on the three and one green bay packers you have ezekiel elliott leading the nfl in rushing you have the packers with the third best run defense in the league so something's obviously got to give the cowboys are going to want to run the ball i am a packer fan as you guys both know mm -hmm. But something tells me I'm I'm picking the Cowboys in this game on the road. I really am. I'm going against my team. I'm going against Aaron Rodgers at home at Lambeau Field. The Packers offense really is just not, in my eyes, elite anymore. Aaron Rodgers is not tearing it up anymore like he like he has been for the last six, seven years. He threw two interceptions against the Giants, whose defense has been obviously not what they hoped for, how much money they spent with Olivier Vernon and Janoris Jenkins, among others. This Packers offense just really isn't elite anymore. Eddie Lacy's got an ankle injury. He looks like he's going to play, but he's definitely still going to be battling it. The Cowboys are going to want to run the ball and not make mistakes. Dak Prescott hasn't thrown an interception this year. I think the Cowboys are going to come into level field and escape with a victory, like a, a field goal. Maybe they win by four where they get a touchdown when the Packers get a field goal. Two-point conversion. So <laughs> maybe a weird two-point conversion. 
I don't know. I, I think the Cowboys win this game. I don't know why, but I, I just don't think Packers' offense is what it used to be, and I think that'll come back to hurt them. And then going against your team, well, good. I'm going against my team. Good, because you should, because I got the pa- I got the Packers. I got the Cowboys <laughs> winning, too, in this game. And uh, we actually talked about the Cowboys, I think, on Wednesday's show. Uh, was it this Wednesday that we talked about the Cowboys? Okay, that we're seeing if they're for real or not. I do think if they win this game at Lambeau, this Cowboys team is pretty much legit. No matter who's at quarterback. No matter who's at quarterback. Because remember, this team has struggled with Tony Romo at times as well. And they look like a playoff team as of right now. The Super Bowl team, I'm not really quite sure. And that's saying a lot with Dak Prescott, the rookie quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott looks like he's about to be the rookie of the year right now. And I do think the Cowboys are going to find some way to win this game. I think it's going to come like really late in the game as well. It's going to be very close. Also, one thing with the Packers, you talk about how good they are with the run defense. They've never faced somebody like Ezekiel Elliott. Like, I know they faced Adrian Peterson week two, but maybe Adrian Peterson isn't Adrian Peterson anymore. He's like, yeah, over 30 years old now, like 33, yeah. Right, so he's uh, someone like that. Also, he got injured that game. You know, the the best running back that they faced as far as yard-wise was TJ Yeldon. So now you get someone, like we said, with the offensive line of the Dallas Cowboys. Zeke Elliott, how good he is. Dak Prescott not being able to – or being able to not throw the disaster passes, only, you know, one turnover. He, you look at the Green Bay Packers defense, they only have two interceptions the whole year. So it's not like they're just ball hawks that intercept the ball all the time. They're not as good with that either. So you take Dak Prescott basically understanding, okay, I only have to do so much every game. I don't have to basically win the game on my own. I don't have to do what Trevor Simeon did where he threw 50, t- uh, 50 passes in a game. If I give the ball to Zeke Elliott, who's been slowly getting better every single game. Like, you know, you saw him kind of struggle early in week one. But ever since then, his yards per game has been going up every single week. You know, it went from 2.6, 4, 4.76, 8.9. Like, slowly going up every week. Baby does that again today, or today on Sunday. And, you know, I'm going to go with you against your team. Taking the Cowboys. Wow, so it's a straight sweep for the Cowboys there. And, I mean... With how our success is, Jeremiah, on the baseball show, we talk about all the time, every team we think is going to win always loses. Oh, I thought we the Broncos it. were going to win last night. So, yeah. yeah, like yeah. That, we picked the Nationals too. Alex, last night and the oh. Dodgers win. So, watch. The Cowboys are going to go in there and just get killed. And the Packers like, are like, going to – Aaron Rodgers is going to light it up with, like, <laughs> five touchdowns They're going to get killed, like, yards. like, 56 to 6. I'm right. kidding. <laughs> watch. I mean, every every pick we make is wrong. I'm yeah, no, serious. So, I mean – Every pick that we made in the baseball show was pretty much wrong. <laughs> so, I'm, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not good. But – Last game we should probably preview here. I guess it's got some big implications. Two teams as well that have a combined two losses. We have the Atlanta Falcons, who looked really, really impressive this year. They're going into Century Link Field to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks are coming off of a bye. They're at home. Their defense is still really, really good. I'm not sold on Atlanta. I mean, they were 5-0 and last year. They're 4-1 and now, so they're getting off to great starts, but then the wheels really fell off after those first five games last year. We'll have to see what happens this year. I think Seattle is a lock to win this game. Russell Wilson's had injuries with the with the knee and the ankle, but it hasn't really affected him at all. He's been playing lights out. The Seahawks are coming off of a bye week, so they're rested. I love teams off bye weeks. I like Seattle in this game really convincingly. I think Atlanta's offense is going to kind of struggle. Those running backs between Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman have been outstanding. It seems like one of them always gets like 70 or 80 yards receiving. The other one will get 70, 80 yards rushing. Julio Jones is a, obviously a great, th- great threat. He's going to be matched up against Richard Sherman, you would believe. I like Seattle in this game. I think they're a lock to win this game. So this is your lock of the week? It's one of them. I mean, there's okay. a couple. I think I think Buffalo's you can only sure. have You can only have one, Ben. Okay, I think New England's definitely going to win over Cincinnati. I like the Steelers over the Dolphins. The only thing that worries me about that game is going down to Florida with that humidity. It seems to affect teams, but Anthony's shaking his head at being a Dolphins fan. He knows knows their season so far. But I like. Okay, if I can only have one, I'll take Seattle as my lock of the week. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I I'm not completely sold on the Falcons, but I do like the way they're heading. Uh, They did prove me a lot. They showed me a lot of things against the Denver Broncos. That was a tough defense. And right now, this Falcons team looks like they have the best offense in football through five weeks. And this is the toughest, second toughest defense, in my opinion, that they're going to face. Broncos was the first one. So, if the Falcons happen to come out on top in this 
environment, then we have to start saying that for real. Basil, now you can't really go against Seattle at Century League Field. You just you just can't. It's so loud. Russell Wilson has been playing good. Christine Michael has been emerged himself as the the leading running back there. So I have to go with uh, Seattle on this game, but I don't think it's going to be a blow like you think it has been. I think it's going to be a lot closer. I think this Falcons offense is going to make it interesting. So I do have the Seahawks in a close game. I wouldn't say a blowout, but I think the Seahawks will not be challenged in this game. I think they'll be they'll win convincingly, sort of like the Chargers did last night against Denver. They won convincingly, but it wasn't a blowout, eight-point game. So I think Seattle will win convincingly. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with you with Seattle because you look at the defense they've had. They haven't allowed a 100-yard receiver in the four games that they've played, so it's interesting to see what Julio Jones does coming off a week where 300 yards and then coming back down to earth with 30-something yards. Now you're going to face them. Also with Seattle, you got, uh, what's his name, Jimmy Graham, doing Jimmy Graham things, back-to-back games with 100 yards receiving. Slowly they're kind of transitioning away from just beast mode, Marshawn Lynch getting all the carries to Christine Michael, trying to do Marshawn things, not totally – him but trying to help out with that also getting a little bit more of the passing game going you got seattle at home which is always one of those things where it's just like they are if they can win call it seven of those games they can win 10 total games every season doing well so far three and one the only losses to the rams i don't know how they lost to the rams i don't know how the rams do good things or the rams but now you got the falcons and if they can limit how good julio jones can be i'm with you i got seattle well, as far as the Rams in Seattle, the Rams, now the L.A. Rams, the former St. Louis Rams, mm-hmm. there's always teams in all sports that just seem to have the other team's number, seem mm-hmm. to always play them well. Mm-hmm. That's the Rams against the Seahawks. They yeah. always play them well. That was an emotional game, their first game back in L.A. So I was not surprised. I mean, we talked about it. I was not surprised that the Rams actually won that game i i thought they would compete in that game i thought seattle would still win but and then nine to three it wasn't really you know much of a game not even a touchdown on the whole entire game four field goals but it was it was it's one of those things the rams seem to always play seattle good just always yeah and the rams were tied for first place at one point i mean yeah. the, the rams last week with their loss and now they go on to on the road to face detroit who had a really convincing win over philadelphia last week who were on a bye week so i was kind of surprised there but is there any other games both you guys, Anthony, Jeremiah, that you're really looking at that you think could be a great game or you, you have an upset, anything like that? Well, there's a couple. One of them is the Philadelphia Eagles at their Washington Redskins. That can have some division implications there. This is a division game. Redskins are still trying to stay, you know, toe-to-toe in the NFC East standings. You got the Eagles who have come out on fire the first three weeks. Even though they did lose, they still competed well in that game. And you also, these both of these teams have losing records, two wins combined. But it's really interesting. It's Caroline Panthers at the New Orleans Saints. This game is interesting, and I know these teams only have two wins combined. But Cam Newton looks like he's going to come back, and will the Panthers get back on track? I think the Panthers' playoff hopes are pretty much kind of they're pretty slim at this point after Monday's loss. But, you know, you still have a whole season left to play. What can you do to kind of try to salvage your season? So I think this game kind of sets that tone for that. I think this game can potentially turn around the Panthers' season. But you are going to the Superdome. The Saints are tough to play in the Superdome. And this defense for New Orleans can't stop anybody. So I do think Cam Looney can get back on track if he does come back from concussion protocol. Which I think is likely to happen. I think he was back at practice this week. Yeah, he's been he's been practicing all week. Yeah, I've said this the last couple of weeks, and I guess I'll say it again. The Panthers cannot afford to lose another game. No, they're going to have Cam Newton back. Jonathan Stewart's going to be returning. The Saints' defense is just tremendously terrible. I realize it's a road game, and the Saints are coming off a bye week, which helps. I think Carolina gets off the Schneid and wins this game. They have to win. They have to. Yeah, no, I'm with you guys. I think New Orleans' defense is. Just- too terrible to have them be relied on even when it's in new orleans even in the superdome yeah i think cam newton you know with him coming back because you see how bad Derek anderson was you see him basically not be able to do anything close to what cam newton can do obviously rushing and uh passing yeah to not necessarily save carolina season 
but at least get them on the right track because if you look at the Panthers, the games they have after this, it's going to be a little bit difficult for them, you know, because you also obviously have to at least get back to 500. You have the Cardinals, you have the Chiefs, even the Raiders, the Seahawks. So, yeah, I will go with the Panthers to at least stabilize the season for right now. Yeah, I think so too. And on Monday, we'll be back recapping this NFL week and also previewing the Monday night game between the Cardinals and the Jets. A big game for the Cardinals as well. They got a good win last week against the Niners, but they have to try and stay afloat there in the NFC. It's a tough, tough conference. So we'll take our last break, and we'll talk our college football weekend. A lot of good games, three of them in particular within the top 25 that we're going to be looking at and talking about previewing. So we'll be right back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, talking some college football right after the break. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to the Golden State Media Contest Football Podcast. And now we're going to be talking some college football. And there's a couple of uh, intriguing matchups inside the top 25. You got Alabama, the number one team in the country, heading over to Tennessee the number ninth ranked team and of course you got number 12 Ole Miss at Arkansas and you got Ohio State number two at eight Wisconsin so these are the three top 25 matchups so which one of these matchups is most intriguing I me I think I'm looking kind of looking forward to Alabama Tennessee because we talked about Tennessee so much last week how this team is they always somehow to get back in the game. And they did it again. They did it again. They did it again. But they lost this time. We knew it was going to come back to bite them. And they're still ranked number nine. And I'm like, wow, okay. I think this is the week where they finally fall off. <laughs> I mean, Anthony, you you literally called it. I was except, so close. Except for the final results. Yeah. Tennessee go down again by double digits in the first half to Texas A&M. They come back. They force overtime at the end of the game. And then A&M scores a touchdown. Tennessee can't go anywhere after that. So they end up losing. But they don't drop in the rankings, as you mentioned, Jeremiah. So I, I guess that's like the one positive. Now they're at home against Alabama. If, if I give them one advantage, it's they're at home. But really, Alabama should win this game. I think they're going to win this game. If Tennessee fall down again in the first half, I don't see that, how they can come back against that, that, the Crimson Tide. That's yeah. probably going to happen. That, that's been every single game with the exception of Ohio. Like, that's been every single game. So, I guess you can go with history that it's going to happen again. And I think Alabama is that one team you don't want to fall behind against. You want to play from ahead. And then it's kind of like Ole Miss did. They played up. They were up 21. Then they sort of came down. Alabama won that game. But this is one of those teams you do not want to fall down against. I can't bet against Nick Saban ever. I'll take Alabama. I'm taking Alabama as well. Yeah, it's one of those things of, like, I can – be hopeful about Tennessee coming back because, yeah, they were down 28-7 and eventually ended up tying it up at 35. But you can do that against Texas A&M. You can do that against Florida. You can do against teams like that. There's, like, basically, like, four programs that are basically, like, a tier above everybody else, be it Clemson, uh, Alabama, Michigan, and Ohio State. Like, those teams are kind of just, like, the next level of that. I guess we thought Houston was until they lost. But – Tennessee, for whatever Hail Mary passes they can do, if you get down by 21 points to Alabama, good luck. Like, you're not coming back from that. Nick Saban is going to step on your throat. Nick, uh, what's his name? Lane Kiffin's going to want to, like, put up some more points just to rub it in a little bit because also Tennessee. He used to be the coach of Tennessee. So Interesting point. Good yeah. point. So he's going to want to get a couple more points just as kind of like a salt in the wound kind of thing. Love Tennessee. I love how they can come back. But, no, this is a week. After coming off of three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back top 25 opponents, yeah, this is probably the game where just everything goes away and just they don't look like the same team. I just don't get how they consistently do that. It's like week in and week out, 
They start off so terrible, and then Butch Davis makes just some sort of great halftime adjustments and, and comes back. And it's like, how do they constantly do this? I just don't know how Tennessee can consistently do this. It's like, are you guys not, like, waking up for the game? Are you guys not, like, getting in your head, like – and then Butch Jones just makes great com- comebacks at halftime. And it's like, I don't I don't get it. But we'll have to see what happens. And watch this be the one week where they get off to a great start right. and then fall apart. It's like yeah, quite the opposite. I, I wouldn't be surprised. This is Tennessee. They're like one of those teams that does great things at one time and then do bad things. They're like kind of like the opposite of the San Diego Chargers, if you so to speak. I mean, you know, I guess so. But yeah, because you know how – because, you know – San Diego gets off to so many good starts, and they lose those games, even though they won last night. We talked about it earlier. Tennessee, they get back to bad starts, and then they win the majority of them. So they're kind of like the opposite of that. I mean, I guess so. We'll have to see what happens. Like I said, I, I think the one advantage is they are at home, obviously, in front of 100,000 fans. It's going to be really loud. Going to try and frustrate the Alabama offense and defense. So we'll have to see what happens. Another good matchup in the SEC is number 12, Ole Miss, going on the road to face number 22, Arkansas. I got to take the running Rebels in this game. I think Arkansas are definitely doing a lot of good things with Brett Bielema since he came over from Wisconsin. He's kind of turning that program around slowly. They're gonna they're a team that wants to play defense and run the ball. Ole Miss, more of an explosive offense in my eyes. Defenses are probably pretty similar. So I'll take Ole Miss in this game. I'm going to take Ole Miss as well, and like you said it, Arkansas has been doing really good with Brett Berlamia there. And, you know, Ole Miss has kind of saved their season, so to speak, you know, the past couple of weeks. And, you know, they're back in the top 15 after dropping down in the 20s. And they did have two tough losses to Alabama for the state. So those are two tough losses that are actually legit losses. And you can't go – I just – I can't go against Chad Kelly. He's the best quarterback in the SEC right now. He's He was the best quarterback going in. And I just not really sold on Arkansas right now. And it may, But I do think they're maybe one year away from being really good. Yeah, you look at Arkansas and they lost, you know, a couple of games, Texas A&M. They lost to Alabama. Given up a little bit of points in both of those games, 24 and 30. Yeah, they beat stuff like Alcorn State and Texas State and Louisiana Tech, but that's not really anything you really kind of give them credit for. You got TCU, they gave up 38 points to them. So as much as Arkansas and Bielema wants to be that kind of Wisconsin-esque, you know, Iowa-esque kind of team where they run the ball and they have good defense, the defense isn't there yet. Like I said, 38 points against TCU, 24 against Texas A&M, not terrible. 30 against Alabama, and then you look at Ole Miss, the lowest they've scored this whole season is 34 points. So you assume they're going to score 35, 38, some, so, some points around that. So I would go with Ole Miss, winning by comfortable margin, uh, but nothing like extreme, like 30 or 20 or anything like that. And Arkansas, this is the second game of four straight weeks of ranked opponents. Next week, Arkansas has Auburn, who is ranked 23 now. And Florida at 18, so this is a tough schedule coming up for Arkansas. So we're going to literally find out a lot about this team in the incoming weeks. As the SEC is really every single week, it seems like no matter who you're playing, even if it's like Kentucky or Vanderbilt, you're still in for a tough, tough game. You mentioned Wisconsin. That brings us to our prime time matchup tomorrow night, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. The Wisconsin Badgers, number 8 in the nation, are hosting the number 2 ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. I like Ohio State in this game. I think it'll. I think this game will probably be more competitive than the Alabama and Tennessee game. I can't bet against Urban Meyer. I think it's really clear that Ohio State and Alabama are the best two teams in college football this year so far. JT Barrett's a good, experienced leader. Nick Saban, great coach. Urban Meyer, just a, as well of a great coach for Ohio State. Wisconsin, a team that wants to play good, solid defense, one of the best defenses in the country, and run the ball. I like Ohio State in this game. They handled business on their, their tough road game against Oklahoma. I think they'll handle business here against Wisconsin. Yeah, and in Wisconsin, you said, Ben, that there's just one of the best defenses in the country. And when they play number four Michigan, they only held them to 14 points. And you know how Michigan has been rolling on the past couple of weeks, even though they're lower-tier opponents. Yeah, like 78-0 to zero against <laughs> Rutgers last week on the road. I mean, Exactly, <laughs> yeah. They, uh, Rutgers didn't even get it at first half to the fourth quarter matter of fact but i think ohio state he i'm not uh, urban meyer he's one of the best coaches 
next to Nick, Nick Saban. Urban Meyer has turned around like four programs. You got to go back to Utah. You got to go back to uh, Florida. He has turned around so many programs in college football. And he turned around Ohio State literally within like two years. Well, I mean, he, they were they were a good program no, under Jim Trussell. No, they were, but they were going through some legal issues and all that. And this is a really good, this really good coach. And and I do agree that Ohio State is the second best team in the country, and that can change within a matter of weeks. And remember, Mich they do play Michigan at the end of the season, so I think we're going to find out if this is really the best team in that game. Because Michigan, they, they, they ain't no pushover as well. You know, we've seen it. Yeah, we, we have so far, definitely. But I do got Ohio State in this game. Urban Meyer got Bowling Green nine wins. Yeah, exactly. Bowling that's Green. What, that's why I said he turns around programs. Yeah, ah. 100%. It's one of those things where Urban Meyer, you know, second best coach in the, end of, uh, in the NCAA – Behind Nick Saban, he's Nick Saban's kind of the guy. He got five national championships. It's hard to beat him. But at the same time, he's pretty close when it comes to that. You got Wisconsin, who lost to Michigan 14-7 to on an incredible interception, that one-handed reception. Um, Wisconsin, you know, said so really good with the defense. You know, the most they've ever given up in a game is 17, and that was oddly enough to Georgia State. But, you know, I think it'll be a close scoring game, you know, maybe not 14-7, but something around that, 21-17, something like that really – Low scoring game. Wisconsin's going to want to run the ball. That's what they do. Ohio State, JT Barrett, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. It's in in Wisconsin, so that's why I think I give a little bit of an edge to Wisconsin as far as keeping it close. But at the same time, you saw what Wisconsin's been doing this year. Their schedule. You talked about uh, last time with Ole Miss and all the stuff that they're going or uh, uh, Arkansas, Arkansas, what they're doing. You got Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State. You got Iowa, which isn't a bad opponent either, and then Nebraska. So that's four out of the next five weeks where they have to face a top ten at the time when they face them, top ten opponent. So for Wisconsin, that has to break at a certain point. And at this point, you tried your hardest against Michigan. This might be where the dam breaks against Ohio State. Don't forget, they beat Michigan State 3 of the 6, too. They were ranked 8th at the time. Right. Yeah, and then they had an upset win over LSU at the beginning of the year, 16-14. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We didn't see that coming at all. So mm -hmm. I'm – Highly sold this Wisconsin team. I just that uh, I can't go against Ohio State at this point of time. No, just can't do it. You can't do it. No way, definitely not. I feel like the only time I can maybe go against Ohio State is if they were to play Alabama. Even even against Michigan, I love Ohio State. Oh, they, uh, they yeah. killed them last yeah. year. I wouldn't say they'll kill them again, but I like Ohio State even over Michigan as it stands right now. But that game is obviously weeks to come. Who knows? We'll have, maybe we'll have some catastrophic injuries. Teams will be a little different. We'll have to wait and see. But there's still a lot of other great games here on the schedule. There's always the chance of fireworks and upsets. Think about Navy, who are actually ranked, I might add, 25th. That is awesome. Yeah, Navy because of the, yes, that, but their that upset went, over Houston yes. last week, mm -hmm. which really knocked Houston out of any chance of getting into the college football playoff, even before their game against Louisville. But, you know, there's always a chance for fireworks and upsets. It's college football. Kids, students get rowdy. It's exciting. Everything happens kind of on a week-to-week -week basis as opposed to really the NFL, which is kind of over your season. Your record means everything. In college football, it's kind of about how you win games and how you do against teams that you're really supposed to kill or whatever. So there's always a chance for great, great things in college football. That's why we love it so much. What about that intriguing matchup with Western Michigan and Akron? The 24-ranked, undefeated yes. Western Michigan. What about that matchup? Do you I, see Akron getting the chance? I mean, I, I, LeBron's not playing for Akron, so <laughs> I'll, I'll take Western Michigan. Okay, yeah. Western, <laughs> Michigan, Western Michigan has been on the – they've been rolling over opponents this year. Even though they are not – even though they're not highly ranked, they're still rolling over teams. That's very important. So, yeah. It's always important when you win. Boise yeah. State's undefeated. They're ranked 15th in the land. It's good to see that the Broncos are still having success since Chris Peterson moved on to Washington. So – Maybe they can be that next surprise team, kind of like Houston. They have a while to go, ranked 15th so far. But they keep winning games. Obviously, they will go up that rankings list. So have to wait and see. But we'll always update you on the show on Monday, recapping the college football weekend, also breaking down the new AP Top 25 poll. We'll have to see if there's anything drastic changing. There's matchups on the Top 25, so obviously there will be changes. But anything kind of like Houston's loss last week. So... With that being said, guys, I think we had a great episode, but it is time to leave. So, I know it is. It well, sucks, yeah. but...
We got to do what we got to do. We're only on so much time here. So I think we had a great episode. You can always uh, look at all the our rest of episodes on our website page and among others, which we'll show in the outro. We'll have that there. So I am Ben. Jeremiah. Anthony. And we are out of here for the weekend. Hope you enjoyed the episode here at the GSMC Football Podcast. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program